Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Parmer Field here in Middletown, Connecticut, as we settle in for the Class L Baseball Championship game. New Canaan taking on Fitch. I'm Don Boyle, and my partner is Steve Riley. For New Canaan, somewhat of a surprise being here, coming in as a 24th seed. Yeah, very young team, only start one senior today. And, and as we were looking at earlier, is Andrew Caselli, the big center fielder for New Canaan, who is a two-time FCAC player, all-league player, as well as he's got it in his blood. His brother Curtis also plays for Detroit, so should be a good one on the New Canaan side. Absolutely. Young team, however, and it should be uh, interesting to see how they perform here today. And on the flip side, for Fitch, they come in with a ton of experience and a very good pitcher in Sean Nato with a 4-1 record. They do, and he's going to be he's going to be really out there. He's a lefty, so he's a crafty one, and he'll be trying to stymie those New Canaan bats. Fitch coming in as a third seed in this Class L baseball tournament. It's live right here from Palmer Field. It should be fun. Back with the first pitch right after these messages. So there you go. Some pregame comments from my partner Steve Riley. I'm Don Boyle. New Canaan taking on Fitch. They have played the national anthem. And welcome to the CIAC Network and our coverage of this high school baseball tournament. This is the Class L Championship game. The New Canaan Rams coached by Mitch Hoffman. And uh, for the Falcons of Fitch, Mark Peluso in his fifth year. And uh, well, Fitch coming in as a third seed. New Canaan as a 24th seed overall, Steve. And uh, kind of interesting, couple of different trips and really up and down all the different classes in the CIC. Ton of upsets. You don't see many number one seeds competing for championship this year. There have been a whole bunch of teams that from different leagues and t league winners have not made it here. And there's been upsets along the way all along. Well, it's interesting uh, for New Canaan. They beat Brantford in round one. They were ninth seeded by the score of nine to two. Then they downed Maloney, five, three, and eight seed. And then he took on six seeded Daniel Hand and beat them six to two in the quarterfinals and the semifinals, an eight four win over 21st seeded Sheehan. So I think that kind of tells the tale right there. On the flip side for Fitch, a 7 0 win over 30th seeded uh, New Fairfield uh, back on uh, in round one. That was on May 29th already. Uh, then they came up with a nice win over 14th ranked Watertown, 6 1. And then they beat Jonathan Law 3 1 in ROM, 1 0 right here at Palmer Field last Tuesday in the semifinals. But if you go back to that Jonathan Law game, Jonathan Law beat last year's Class L champion Notre Dame of West Haven three times, all by the score of 1 0. Their pitcher in that game against Fitch only pitched a two-hitter, and Fitch somehow scraped out the win. So, Watt played some great baseball. Fitch taking advantage of a miscue to score a, a run. They stole a base, a home, I believe, and that uh, to score another, and uh, some things like that happened, and here they are in the state championship game. But we always talk about during the season, Don, that one bad inning could end your tournament run, and and that's what happens sometimes. You know, you, you, they don't have the luxury of the major leagues. They don't play seven games in a tournament champion. It's one and done. And, and that's really the excitement of it because anybody really can get through those five games to get here. All right, Sean Nato on the mound, 4-1 and one mark. He'll be the starting pitcher today for Fitch. And here's the batting order for New Canaan. And leading off is the catcher, Casey Willett. He's followed by Doug Riley, the second baseman. Andrew Caselli, the center fielder, bats third. And Willie Berger is cleanup spot. He'll play third base. Brian Moran, the designated hitter, bats fifth. Dan Rajowski, the pitcher, bats sixth. Gogo Jones, the first baseman, bats seventh. Nick Cassione, the right fielder, bats eighth. And Grady Amrine, the left fielder, bats ninth. So the game's first pitch, and it breaks off the glove of the catcher, Zach Wolfgang. We talk about that, the New Canaan team comes in with only one senior on the field. And Fitch has eight out of nine starters are seniors. Here comes the 1 0, and that's a strike call over the outside corner. Count goes 1 and 1 to a left. Now you talk about this New Canaan team being so young. Who let the junior and a captain, three time All League player, FCAC player. And boy, out of the FCAC, you had Greenwich go unbeaten in Class Double L, and they're not going to play in a championship game. Here's the 1 1, that missed outside. Yep. And they didn't even win their league tournament. The FCAC, I believe, was won by Trumbull this year. Here's a great thing about Casey Ouellette, uh, high honor student. That is just terrific, isn't it? That's what you want. Now the left hander, NATO, into the windup and the pit rides high. And the count would travel the three balls and one strike to Casey Olet. 
You know, Don, usually when you come to a championship game, you expect to see two pitchers whose records are like 8-1 or 9-1 and one and so on. And here you have, you know, Nadu with a regular season record of 2-1, and one, won two games in a tournament coming in at 4-1. And, and Rajowski for New Canaan coming in with a record of 5-2. and two. Here comes the 3-1 pitch, missed outside. That's ball four. Olet down to the bag at first for the Cinderella team here in Class L. Brings up Doug Riley, the second baseman. He is a senior, also an all-league player out of the FC Act. So Riley will step on in and do some housekeeping in that right-handed batter's box. Well, let's see what they do with Ouellette. What would you do here in the uh, very first thing of play? Get your leadoff runner on now? Well, like the first thing you want to do is see what the what move this uh, pitcher has, the lefty. They do from Fitch. So you want to gauge that too much. You don't want to get picked off. That's the worst thing you can have to start off the game. They go to work from the stretch. Checks the runner at first. The bunt is going to be popped up, and it's going to fall safely to the grass. And then you had Wolfgang and Nato collide, and everybody is safe. So it did not look like a pretty bunt at all, and it wasn't. It was bunted up in the air. It's a miscommunication between pitcher and catcher. Everybody's safe on the bases. Well, you think that somebody's going to be scored an error there. Yep, error on the catcher, they score it. So a rocky beginning here for Fitch. You know, uh, with the uh, conversation on the mound, we'll once again set that batting order for New Canaan and run it down for you. Well, leading off, as we said, it was Casey Glad. He's standing on second base now with Doug Riley. He's followed by Andrew Casali, who's up now, the center fielder. Willie Berger at third base. He's the cleanup hitter. Brian Moran, the designated hitter, bats behind him. He'll bat for Matt Toth, the shortstop. Dan Rajowski, the pitcher, bats sixth. Gogo Jones, seventh. Nick Cashone, the right fielder, he bats eighth. Brady Amrine, the left fielder, bats ninth. Here, right here in this spot, Don, what I think about again is bunted again. They, they missed one of them, maybe they'll miss up another. Andrew Casali will step up, the junior center fielder. One of the captains on this young uh, New Canaan Ram squad. They got two on, nobody out. There's been a walk and an error. Bad start for Fitch. And Nato will look at the runner down at second. Ouellette, who's ready to scramble along. We'll set that defense for you for Fitch in just a moment as Nato working from the stretch. They creep in. The bag at first, the bunt out in front of home. It's picked up by Nato. Goes to third with a low throw. And it breaks off of Hall. Rolls into the outfield grass. And coming home is Ouellette. Now you get runners on the corners. Another Fitch error. Ouellette will score. It is immediately New Canaan one and Fitch nothing. Boy, they are not playing good baseball right now. No, and that's why I said, it. you know, give him another bunt. See what they do with it again. That'll be an error on the pitcher on the throw. Going all the way to third was Doug Riley. Casali at first base has been a walk and two errors on two bunts. Remember doing an SEC championship baseball game a couple years ago. Guilford and Amity. Amity had a spectacular team at the time. Guilford came up with that strategy. Let's bunt, make them feel it. And Amity was throwing the ball all over the diamond. Never recovered. So you do see it happen. Make that infield work. And this is Berger to the plate. He is the third baseman for New Canaan. The throw over to the bag at first. Now you have that classic. You set up the classic uh, Southern California play down. First and third against the lefty. Where you can actually do a squeeze and have the runner go. If the pitcher throws to first, the runner scores from third. Not likely, though, with a big four hitter. Willie Berger looks like a big young man up there at the plate, so they'll probably let him swing away, see if they can get him multiple runs here. Nado in the windup, and the pitch is way outside. So pitch trying to settle down. They trail by the score of one to nothing already. They've scored a run, has New Canaan, without the benefit of a base hit. They get runners on the corners with Berger at the plate. The sophomore wiggling the bat. He's the third baseman today. Here comes the pitch, and that's over the inside corner. Good pitching on the hands, and the count now one and one. Yep, and Fitch playing back to double play depth, so they're content to give up another run to try to get the double play. Fitch making their fifth appearance in a state championship game. They beat those Amity Spartans we were talking about in 2005 was the last time they made an appearance and won a championship. The New Canaan boys been a long time since 1972 uh, when they lost to Shelton in their only baseball championship appearance in school history. They lost 4-2 to the Shelton Gale. Here comes the pitch. The runner goes first to second. Ball fouled off by Berger. Looked like they had a little play going on there, Steve. Yeah, they started running that runner, but this time their batter was swinging away. Oh, 
what always poses a dilemma for the defense because even if he runs on the kick and there's a throw to first, then the first baseman has to wonder whether he throws long to second. The pitch down low, runner goes, they'll throw down, cut off by Hill, it will squirt through Hill, and it's uh, gobbled up by Miwa, the second baseman. We'll set that defense for you right now. Zach Wolfgang behind the plate defensively for Fitch. Al Jordan Johnson down at first base. Jonathan Miwa as the second baseman. Aaron Hill at the shortstop, and uh, David Hall at third base. Jonathan Conley in left field. Uh, Chris. Corum Giles, a center fielder. That ball hit to the right fielder right on cue. And going back as Santer can't get to it. Ball deflects off his leg and rolls all the way to the fence. And two runs are going to score. Heading to third base is Berger. And he slides in there. And Fitch continues to struggle defensively as Santer can't haul it in, Steve. And boy, what a start here for New Canaan in the first inning. They have a 3 nothing lead. Still nobody out. Well, that time the outfielder started to turn the wrong way. The ball was tailing towards that right field line. So it ended up being a triple here. But, you know, watching the defense of Fitch down, I watched that play unfold, and I saw the left fielder didn't back up third. So that throw could have been away, could have been even more of a da disaster. So right now it just seems like Fitch really isn't concentrating on what they're doing. And they are trailing by the score of three to nothing. You think it could be taking the 24th seed a little lightly, too? Moran to the plate, the designated hitter. Nato into the windup and the pitch, swing and a miss. So a walk, two errors, and really a mental error and a bad route on a fly ball to right, turned into a triple, and New Canaan has three on the board here at the top of the first. You know, it's not always the best team that wins, though. it's the team that plays the best on this day. Here's a swing and a miss. That's what's interesting about baseball, more so than all others, you know? Yeah. The way it goes on a particular day. Football, you can somehow get back into it physically, you know, hockey the same thing basketball kind of get back into it with physical play but uh, baseball is just as much mental as anything else and here's a strikeout of Moran so he's called out and strikes first strikeout for NATO in the ball game and you have one down Murkowski will step up the pitcher now uh, what's going through his mind Steve you've coached pitches in the past now he comes to the plate three nothing lead he hasn't even gone to the mound yet. Yeah well what he wants to really do here is get that ground ball somewhere to score that runner because you, you know runs are at a premium in state championship games. Matowski with a big swing right there fouls it straight back he is a sophomore he has taken the lead role here in the postseason out in the mound and as a result he will be the starting pitcher today for New Canaan with a chance to bring home a state championship. Fitch playing halfway in the middle. That pitch is over for the strike call. Go go Jones on deck, the first baseman for the Rams. You know, I'm sure that they're looking at the runner on third, big guy at third, maybe he doesn't have a lot of speed, so Fitch is content to play halfway. Maybe they still feel they have a play at the plate if he goes. Here comes the 0-2, and that's driven foul down the right field line. Had a little sprinkle prior to the start of this game. The field does look a little damp. I don't know if we're going to have much rain throughout the day here at Palmer Field in Middletown, but time has been called by the plate umpire. Here comes the 0-2, and there's a little dribbler off the end of the bat. That's going to uh, roll in the foul territory, scooped up alertly by NATO. Lucky he did, or that would have been a run, plus a runner safe at first. Berger back to the bag at third. Count now 0-2 to Dan Rakowski, the starting pitcher today for New Canaan. Mitch Hoffman's got to be pleased with the start today for his Cinderella team. Well, it's like a boxer comes out in the first inning wailing. And then see if the, uh, the favorite can sustain the blow and come back. Here comes the 0-2. You're right. A lot of baseball remaining. We're only yeah. in the top of inning number one. one and just afternoon time. So there you go. Dimensions here at Palmer Field. 400 feet to straightaway center field. 327 down the left field line. to get 322 or so down the right field. There's a ball hit towards right field but out of play. 380 to the alley. Left field. 380 to the alley. Right field. Well, for Wojowski here, he just wants to drive the ball into the outfield. He's got to get it a little bit deeper to score big Willie Berger from third base. Berger has that lead away. 
Sean Nato into the windup. Here comes the pitch to the plate. That's up high. Count those level at two balls and two strikes. Kyle's a center fielder playing just about straight away. Santier in right field is straight away there and off the line and left is the off speed pitch and a swing and a miss by Rakowski and he strikes out. So that's the stri second strike out of the ball game for Nado and it brings up Gogo -Go Jones the first baseman. Well here's the thing you had man on third base with nobody out and we have to see whether the future foretells how important that fourth run is. Jones, a senior, bringing that leadership for his pitch in for the strike as he swings from the left side. And the coach said that he was, he's been the Nick Swisher the Rams needed on the bus rides. There you go. So. He's loose as a goose. Speaking of geese, I think I saw a little goose hanging around the ballpark yesterday. Has not made an appearance, did not last night, but he's living here somewhere. Saw him with that long neck hanging around. Here comes the 1-1, one, one, and that's in for the strike. Count goes 1-2 and two here to Jones. We've been to fields this year across Connecticut that have been inundated with these. And some teams actually trying to have, like Watertown has a company behind it, has a siren. Fastball swing and a miss by Gogo -Go Jones. So good recovery by Sean Nato on the mound after the Rockies start. But for New Canaan, they put up three runs on just one hit. There was a walk, a couple of errors. They leave a runner on. And through a half inning of work, New Canaan three. Fitch coming to the plate. Back with the bottom half right after these messages on the CIAC network. This may sound like a typical high school basketball game being played on a Friday night in Connecticut. In fact, it's a crash course in cooperation and teamwork. It's a test of dedication, determination, and drive. It's character development in action. If you think high school sports are only about competition, think about this. High school sports can play a critical role in a student's overall education. In fact, Studies show that students who participate in school sports are more likely to enjoy greater levels of achievement in their academic lives. At the same time, playing sports helps teach lessons not covered in the classroom. Lessons like tolerance, respect for the rules, and the importance of supporting your community. High school sports, a winning part of a complete education. This message presented by the Connecticut Interscholastic Athletic Conference and the Connecticut Association of Athletic Directors. Back here at Parmer Field as we move on to the bottom of inning number one. And Fitch coming up to the plate for the first time. And Dan uh, Rakowski, uh, well, working now with a three-run lead as he takes them out for the first time. Here's the batting order for the Fitch Falcons. Leading off is center fielder Chris Coram Giles. Batting second is the pitcher, Sean Nader. Aaron Hill, the shortstop, bats third. In the cleanup spot is David Hall, the third baseman. Al Jordan Johnson is the first baseman. He bats fifth. In the sixth spot is Ali Auerbach, the designated hitter. He'll bat for Jeremy Santier, the right fielder. Zach Wolfgang, the catcher, bats seventh. Jonathan Miwa, the second baseman, bats eighth. And Jonathan Conley, the left fielder, bats ninth. So Coram Giles will step in here for Fitch, trying to get things going. Kowski out in the mound, the right hander looking in. He is a sophomore, and uh, as uh, Coach Hoffman said, he has been terrific here in the tournament. And that pitch into Giles in there for the strike. Nato on deck, he'll the follow. He'll set the defense for New Canaan in just a moment. And here comes the 0 1, and that's a swing and a miss. Quickly, the count goes 0 and 2 to Chris Coram Giles. So, Coram Giles in a hole here, the center fielder for Fitch here in the bottom of the first inning. The pitch to the plate, and that ball hit high in the air to the right fielder coming on in. Uh, as the owner will look up and make the catch. And Forum Giles is retired on a fly ball. We'll set the defense for you for New Canaan. We told you about the pitcher out in the mount, Dan uh, 
Mirzkowski just met the right fielder, Nick Cassione. In center field, Andrew Casale, and in left field is Grady Amrine. Behind the plate, Casey Olette. First baseman is Gogo Jones. Doug Riley at second. Uh, Matt Cooth at shortstop. And uh, Willie Berger at third base defensively here today uh, for New Canaan. Good looking at that Fitch dugout where they're trailing by three already. You gotta keep the spirits up. It's early on here in the bottom of one. Well, you do, and you can't just press. You have to just keep getting good at bats. Pitch to Nato, and he'll pop that up. And will it hit the tin roof above us? No, it goes beyond, so no big thud. Dan Rajowski said, Don, just the sophomore, a 1.13 ERA. So he's a good one, and he also is an all league player. That pitch just missed. Count goes two and one and eight. Oh, Aaron Hill on deck. Hill could be a game breaker. We had a chance to watch him play some American Legion baseball. Very slick as a fielding shortstop. And if he gets on the bases, he can he can fly. So be interesting to see. That pitch is low and away. As I said, then the key to get back in this game for Fitch is simply to have good at bats, to get men on base, not to try to hit a three run homer with nobody on. Here comes the 3 1, and that ball is going to be popped up. Looked like he was swinging for the home run there. It's going to drift to the outfield grass, and Casale will come on, and he'll make the catch. So Nato retired on a high, high shallow fly to center. So now you have two down, and Aaron Hill stepping up to the plate. Well, the neutral set of umpires for today's game, Don, are from the New Haven County Board. DJ Nadu's behind the plate. Buddy Chernovitz down at first base. Rudy Raffone at second base. And Frank Moore at third base. Here comes the pitch. The Hill, and it's over the inside. Corner of the plate for the strike call to Aaron Hill. David Hall on deck. And as we mentioned, Hill can certainly ignite this team. Number three hitter in their lineup. Fitch in the white uniform, Duquesne and in the red top. That curveball just took a bite out of that outside corner. The count goes 0 2. Pretty pitch. Kowski pitching with some command here in the bottom of inning number one. He's into the windup in the 0 2 down low. Left behind the plate looking for that baseball. Dangerous pitch there because if that he'd be swung at it, he'd have a man on first. That 0 2, you, you want to make it. Tempting, but not wild. One ball, two strikes, two outs. Base is empty here in the bottom of inning number one. Here comes the one-two pitch down the dirt again. And well, we're seeing Ouellette going into that left-handed batter's box. He does a nice job catching those pitches down in the dirt, doesn't he? And good to see that defensive stuff from the he catcher. Does. Wind blowing out towards left center field towards that 380 mark in the alley out there. Here comes the pitch, ground ball. It's fouled off third base way. this historic ballpark, Palmer Field. Talk about the history of this park a little bit as the game moves along. Laskowski's pitch, curveball, is going to be hit slowly. Charged by the shortstop. Can he make the throw? No, the third baseman cut across. And a nice try there by Berger. Boy, he came from out of nowhere and called off the shortstop and made the throw accurately. But, you know, just too quick as Hill down the line. That goes as an infield hit. Yeah, Hill just flew down that line. It's an awfully difficult play to try to catch a run like that. Batting We'll see here, Don, what Fitch's strategy is trailing by three runs, whether they send a runner with two outs. Soft throw over the bag at first. It's Parma Field, I think, uh, dates all the way back to, like, 1930s or something like that. I mean, it's, it's been here a while, hasn't it? It has. They even had the uh, American Legion World Series here one year. There's a little ground ball hit down to the shortstop. Tooth will field it. Did he win the race in the bag? No. Well, we mentioned that Aaron Hill and his speed could cause some problems, and it has now on two occasions here in the bottom of one. That was hit slowly, and he had Hall going down the line at first quickly. Hill safe at second, beating the foot there. <laughs> the shortstop, Tooth, and there you go. Infield base hit. You know, two good pitches by Rajowski to both Hill and Hall. He got That time he had Hall fisted. So they just couldn't make the play. Shortstop that time should have been seeing that he's not going to get the out at second and maybe charge it harder trying to get the out at first. 
Here comes the pitch loan away to Al Jordan Johnson. So two infield singles, and he got runners at first and second with two down for Fitch. And Rakowski uh, will have a conversation now with Casey Olette out there in the mound. So trying to settle him down there a little bit as we uh, zero in on the battery mates for New Canaan. Left fielder for New Canaan playing quite shallow down for a number five hitter. Here comes the 0-1 inside, breaks off the glove of Ouellette, and runners will move up a base. Big turn of the bag at third by Hill, but he'll put the brakes on. That pitch inside, and Ouellette couldn't go get it. They were talking about perhaps uh, his defensive abilities, and now Mitch Hoppins coming out of the dugout, and he's going to settle things down for Duquesne. And this game is not off to uh, a beautiful start. <laughs> Both teams playing rather ugly baseball right now. I guess you'd have to consider that a pass ball, allowing the runners to move up. Yeah, they didn't hit the dirt, so that's the frustration here. Is they cannot allow this to cascade into something with two outs. Because right now you have two runners in scoring position and a base hit here. Done. All right, the David right Hall. I'm, oh, I'm sorry. The David Hall uh, base hit has been changed to a fielder's choice, Steve. Just oh, okay. Out. Johnson to dig back in, count one ball and one strike. Arabach on deck, the designated hitter from Fitch. They trail by the score of three to nothing. And that pitch inside, and it hits Johnson. So Jordan Johnson down to the bag at first, hit by pitch. And now the bases are loaded for the designated hitter, Ollie Arabach, as he comes up to the plate. Now they're questioning whether or not he actually swung at the pitch at all. It looked like he was twisting out of the way, but did the back go through? Our back is a senior on this uh, senior-laden Fitch Falcon team, coached by Mark Peluso. The only junior in the starting lineup is Aaron Hill, who's standing on third base. So Arbach will step in, and he'll swing from the right side. Base is jammed with two outs. Here comes the pitch, swing and a miss. All this stuff happening with two outs, too, here for Fitch in the bottom of one as they try to quickly climb back into the game, trailing three to nothing. Very strange. Cam Rhyme way off that line in left field. Here comes the pitch. That ball going to be fouled back towards us. Kowski trying to get out of this base is loaded jam unscathed. Well, Jowski has to be careful here not to have one of those wild curveballs in the dirt. Looking in for the sign. Murkowski, he'll work from the glove high from the stretch. Here comes the 0-2, and that's fouled straight back over the top. Right there, I'll back just missed that. <laughs> it's a pivotal point in the game for Fitch because you don't want to leave three runners on base. Center field, Casali shifted over towards right center. So they do not think Arbach's going to get around on anything. He tried to go to left field and popped it up. Foul territory catch with the mask off. And uh, Casey Olette will make the catch for the inning's final out in foul territory. And they get out of the jam unscathed. But Fitch did threaten. They come up with no runs. Uh, they had just one base hit. They loaded the bases, but they leave them full. We'll be back with the top of two. Your score, New Canaan three and Fitch nothing through one complete on the CIAC network. Everybody knows that high school sports generate suspense, excitement, and drama. They also generate higher grade point averages, stronger work habits, and greater self-esteem. Everybody knows that high school sports give us more value for our entertainment dollar. They also give us leaders committed to strengthening communities right here in Connecticut. The true value of playing sports in school can't be measured in wins and losses or dollars and cents. Studies show that participation in sports, along with other extracurricular activities, is one of the best ways to teach leadership, cooperation, accountability, and other invaluable life skills. Don't just stand on the sidelines. Encourage the young people you know to get in the game. When you do, you'll be helping them get ahead in life. High school sports, a winning part of a complete education. 
This message presented by the Connecticut Interscholastic Athletic Conference and the Connecticut Association of Athletic Directors. Back here at Farmer Field. New Canaan coming back to the plate for the second time. They have the 3-0 lead through one inning of work. Don Boyle and my fabulous partner Steve Riley alongside. We'll lose Steve for game number two of our broadcast. But Sam Foster's going to step in and oh, take his place for game two. He'll be celebrating as his brother was on the state champion playing zone. Uh, yeah, Lose him. number nine, Nick Cassione. So leading things off, Castellone, and he's going to follow that one straight back. Amrime, and then the top of the order, Ouellette, scheduled to hit three runs on just one hit to New Canaan in the first couple of errors by Fitch. Nato settled down to strike out the side. That's how strange this game can be, that pitch outside. You know, that's, that's perfect execution. You strike out the side, you had to get a couple of errors thrown in. <laughs> you toss in a walk, and all of a sudden you got runs on the board, a misplayed fly ball for a triple. Here comes the 1-1, foul straight back. Well, only one ball went out of the infield, right? And got the three runs. Cassione is a sophomore, plays a couple of sports, also plays football for the Duquesne and Rams, which is an outstanding football program for you folks who do not live in the beautiful state of Connecticut. The 1-2 pitch, that missed outside. He's also, he transferred here from Florida. Nado into the windup. The 2 2. That ball popped up. Drifting uh, into foul territory. And it's going to be caught by Al Jordan Johnson, the first baseman for Fitch for the inning first out. So Castellone is retired on a pop, foul ball. So Amrine will step up. Grady, the left fielder today for this new Canaan squad. He is a junior. Bases are empty here in the top of two. That pitch uh, well struck towards right field. Santier going back, looking up. It's going to be over his head. Ryan the bag at first is Amrime looking for two, thinking three. Turns the bag with a stumble. Here comes a throw. Here comes a runner. And sliding in with a one-out triple is Grady Amrime. Boy, he nearly fell down. Turning the bag at second, was able to recover and beat the throw. Well, that time Santier in right field down simply drifted back on that fly ball instead of turning that shoulder and sprinting as he was trying to track it as he drifted back and then misplayed it again Don I looked at that throw to third base nobody was really backing up that throw Casey Ouellette who walked and scored back in the first will come to the plate for New Canaan that's just their second hit of the ball game both hits have been triples to right field there's a conversation on the mound. There's a conversation down at the bag at third, which might be the important conversation as the umpire and crew getting together over there. I don't know if uh, the third baseman, uh, Hall, might have got something in his eye. It's always possible. And the ball, ball did come in on a bounce, so it's possible that on that surface it might have picked up a piece of gravel or so. It's like a gray gravel surface out there. Drains extremely well. So Lett will step up to the plate. Nato under pressure again. The infield will come in around the horn, and that pitch missed low and outside. There's one out you want to get Lett to drive the ball. You never know. They could be thinking squeeze as well, I suppose. The pitch. Missed low and outside. Count goes to 2-0. Oh. Nato has walked one, struck out three. Castellon to pop up in the foul territory to start the second inning. Then uh, Amrime with that triple over the head of the right fielder, Jeremy Santier. He sits at third now with the infield drawn in. Count 2-0. And, oh. and here comes the Nato's pitch. And that's going to be hit high in the air. And foul. And out of reach ball stays in the field of play so they can reuse that baseball that's good news for the CIC probably supplying the baseballs I mean they're not cheap anymore no they're not it's like what almost 50 bucks a dozen 
fifty dollars a dozen, really. Well, I would imagine if you buy them in bulk, it's much cheaper than that. You know, much cheaper when I was a child. Two balls, one strike, one out, runner at third base here in the top of two. The pitch of the plate is outside. The count goes to three and one. Casey will let the catcher at the plate for the New Canaan Rams. Well, the official tournament ball is a wrong one. So I think during the year, you're allowed to use I think, three different types of baseballs. But you must, in the tournament play, is all one baseball. Nato, the 3 1 pitch way outside. So he loses a let. He walks for the second time. Tanay got runners on the corners with one out. Brings up Doug Riley, who reached on an error when he tried to bunt his way on, or at least push the runner a lot back in the first. He popped it up, and the pitcher, Nato, and the catcher, Zach Wolfgang, collided. The error charged to the catcher, and everybody was safe, and the floodgates opened up in the first inning for the Cannon with three runs. Throw to the bag at first. Runner back in time over there. Sometimes teams will also employ a play called long lead and take a big lead and hope that the pitcher kicks and throws it over first. Another throw to the bag at first, runner back in time. Well, the reason for that, Don, is that if the if you throw it over the first with a big kick and then the runner on third actually breaks on the long lead or waits to see if the first baseman will throw it all the way to second and then break. Here's the pitch. Strike call over the outside corner. Count goes 0 and 1. Sky seem to be brightening just a little bit, so that's good news. But they brighten up. I actually saw Cromwell in this situation in their semifinal game against Northwest Catholic run a safety squeeze first and third. Here comes the pitch, and it drills the batter, Doug Riley. Got him in the small of the back. He was able to turn away from it. And he is down to the bag at first. Now they're loaded with one out. And it brings up Andrew Casali, the number three hitter in the lineup, who reached on an error. On a bunt, back in the first, eventually scored a run. Center fielder, number three, Andrew Casali. So, Amrime at third, he tripled the gift there. Let walk has been pushed to second. Riley hit by the pitch, takes over first base. They thought for a second to go from the windup, then shifted over to the strike. Here comes the pitch and a swing and a miss. Casali swinging at a pitch that dropped off the table. That pitch tickle the outside corner. That strike zone got a little wide right there. The count goes 0 and 2 to Andrew Casali with Willie Berger on deck. That black part of the plate. That on the edge. Yeah, you know, it's hidden by the clay. Here yeah. comes the pitch, and there's a one hopper down the second. Could be two. The out the bag at second. Hill on the first and got it there in time. That was a big double play. Turned right there by the Fitch defense as Casali hits into a 4-6 free double play. And somehow, Sean Nato and company, they escaped unscathed in the top of the second inning, Steve. Yeah, what a great one there. That was a really fast turn as that ball got to the second baseman quickly. And I'll tell you, that shortstop Aaron Hill fired it over the first. So for New Canaan, they come up empty in the top of the second. The score remains New Canaan three and Fitch nothing. Back with more of the Class L Championship Baseball game presented by the CIEC right here on the CIEC Network. It may not require a textbook, but it's filled with valuable lessons. It may not take place in a classroom, but it's an ideal environment for learning. It may not involve a diploma, but it can help prepare Connecticut's young people for life. It's high school sports. High school sports can play a critical role in a student's overall education. In fact, studies show that students that participate in high school sports are more likely to enjoy greater levels of achievement in their academic lives. If you think high school sports are only about competition, think again. Better yet, think about attending a high school sporting event in your community. You'll be amazed by what you see. High school sports, a winning part of a complete education. This message presented by the Connecticut Interscholastic Athletic Conference and the Connecticut Association of Athletic Directors.
Good look at the crowd on hand here at Farmer Field in Middletown, Connecticut, right off Route 66 here in Middletown. New Canaan with the lead at three to nothing over Fitch. Fitch coming to the plate here in the bottom of inning number two, Steve. They loaded the bases in the first and came up a bit empty. It'll be interesting to see what they can do here in the second inning against Dan Rakowski. Rakowski working with the three-run lead. Zach Wolfgang, the lead it off. He is the catcher for Fitch. And he swings at the first pitch off the handle and out of play. I like a couple of the names here. You got Wolfgang, you got Go Go. All kinds know, of great stuff, huh? You know, the thing is, I can see that the Fitch coach already has somebody warming up in that left field bullpen. You really can't afford to let this, you know, get away, get away from them. Here comes the pitch curveball, bites in for the strike, and the count goes 0 and 2 to Zach Wolfgang. I mean, you just can't have walks and hit batters. And that was his second walk in two innings along with the hit batter. So you, I'm sure he just doesn't want to see that circumstance again. Here comes the 0-2, and that ball is hit towards the right fielder. Going on back is Cassione. He'll find it as he circled underneath to make the catch. And uh, Zach Wolfgang is put away on a fly ball. And one down here in the bottom of inning number two with New Canaan leading 3 to nothing. Eight, second baseman number 10. John Miwa. So Miwa will step up to the plate. Jonathan Miwa, the second baseman today, also a terrific pitcher for this pitch team. He pitched a shutout in the semifinals, which was just terrific in that, that win over Ram. You know, in that game, they scored their only run. It was an unearned run. The right fielder came on for Ram and dropped the ball and allowed a runner to score from third base in the second. That's how they made their way here. Here comes the 0-1 curveball over the outside corner for the strike. Kowski looking like he's got some confidence out there in the mound, Steve. Yeah, he's getting that curveball to nip that outside part of the plate, and he's forcing those Fitch batters to go the other way with it. If they try to pull it, they'll either ground out or pop up. That pitch down low. So the count is one ball and two strikes. And one out, and the base is empty. Here in the bottom of inning number two, three nothing, New Canaan leading. Fitch at the plate, the number three seed in this Class L tournament. Here's a ground ball. It's going to be chopped up the middle. Two through. Deliver the first base. A little low. Nice scoop by Gogo -Go Jones over there in the low throw from the bag at second, and uh, Miwa is retired. Jonathan Conley will step up, the left fielder for Fitch. I like these Fitch uniforms. White uniforms with a black normal. Well, at least today we can tell the difference between the yeah. two teams. Since last night we had blue shirts for each team. Here comes the pitch, and that ball is going to be fouled off into the netting. Light breeze here at Parmet Field. Do have some cloud cover up above. As Kowski ready to deal, the right hander in the windup in the 0 1 off speed pitch, slapped down to the second baseman. Riley fields it and on the first, got it there in time. And that will do it. An easy 1 2 3 inning for the New Canaan Rams as pitch goes quietly with route 2 complete now of this Class L Championship baseball game. And your score, New Canaan with all three runs in the first with a 3 0 lead over Fitch. Back with more on the CIAC network. These days, the concept of value matters more than ever. And you'd be hard pressed to find a better value than high school sports. Extracurricular activities, including sports, make up about 2% of the budget for a typical Connecticut high school. In return, participation in sports promotes citizenship and sportsmanship. Sports also instill a sense of community pride and teach lifelong lessons about cooperation and self-discipline. They encourage physical fitness. They produce community leaders. By offering so many benefits to the community for such a small percentage of a school's overall budget, it's easy to see why high school sports are one of the best bargains around. The real cost would come from not having them at all. High school sports, a winning part of a complete education. This message presented by the Connecticut Interscholastic Athletic Conference and the Connecticut Association of Athletic Directors. Well, some of the fans enjoying the 
early afternoon here at Parmer Field. 3 0. New Canaan with the lead over Fitch as we move on to the top of inning number three. Berger scheduled to lead it off. Moran and then Reskowski to follow against Sean Nato, who's come out here to work the top of the third inning. Third baseman number five, Willie Berger. Berger tripled the right his first time, knocked in a couple of runs. Santier misplayed the ball a little bit, and it was virtually turned into a triple. It was still well struck as that pitch is in on the hands for ball one. Sometimes not easy for a right fielder to uh, read the flight of a ball off that right-hander's bat. No, and it was hit high as well, so. Here comes the 1-0. And one ball and one strike, the burger. Ran on deck. Nado into the windup, trying to find that rhythm. Fastball swing and a miss. He struck out the side in the first. He's had some control problems. He has walked two and hit a batter. His defense has let him down, including his own when he misfired on the throw to the bag at third on a bunt. Big swing and a miss, and he strikes out Berger, who may have chased one out of the strike zone, and that'll be the fourth strike out of the ball game for Nado. They have one down, and Moran stepping up to the plate. Number was called out on strikes Brian back on the first, Brian. so Brian is 0 for 1. You know, there was a time down in CIC history where the state tournament games were nine innings. And they now only play seven. That pitch fouled off. That'll date me. <laughs> yeah. That was a long time ago. I, yeah, I think a lot of associations used to have uh, nine inning games back in the day. Here comes the 0 1. That's a tad high. Also interesting when you talk about uh, baseball and the history of baseball here in the state of Connecticut. We'll get to that in just a moment. Here comes the 1-1. One, one. That's a strike call over the outside corner. Count goes 1-2 and two to Moran. Designated hitter today. Good look at Sean Nato. Looks like he's settled down a little bit. Could have been some championship nerves with the first couple of innings. That pitch just missed outside. The first CIC baseball tournament game was played back in 1938. The first champion, Naugatuck, to beat Manchester 7-0. They actually didn't play baseball from 41 to 54 due to a lack of interest. There's a swing and a miss and a strike out of Moran. So what do you think of that? Well, I know also at one time the tournament was by invitation only. They only picked, I think it was like 16 teams or so, and then they played a tournament across the state to determine who was the state champion. So they went to the current format. In 1955, they went to the class format. Nagatuck uh, beating West Haven in 1955, won nothing in Class L. This is the Class L championship game right here. It's Rick Kowski stepping up to the plate. He struck out his first time. Nato ready to deal it. Here comes the 1-0, town high. Defensively, Zach Wolfgang behind the plate. Al Jordan Johnson at first. Uh, Jonathan uh, Miwa down there at second base and Aaron Hill at shortstop. David Hall at third base defensively for Fitch. Outfield has shifted towards right just a tad as the 2-0 pitch is down low. Conley in left, Giles in center, and Santer in right field defensively for the Fitch Falcons. We had a great crowd for the championship game last night between... Uh, We'll get to that in a moment. Here comes the 3 0, and that's over there for the strike, like, like an automatic strike call. And the count goes to three balls, one strike. Plainville, and of course, had him killing worth one by Plainville. Over 1,800 folks here for that one. Absolutely. It was mobbed. Even all those right field stands were filled. People were actually in the center field stands. Kowski draws the walk. That's a two out walk. That is the third walk issued by Sean Nato in the ball game. Brings up Gogo Jones, who struck out back on the first. If you're just tuning in to Canaan scored all three of their runs for the 3-0 lead in the first. Well, that with a leadoff walk. Riley laid down a bunt. It was uh, misplayed by the catcher and pitcher. Eric charged to the catcher. They had runners at uh, first and second throw over the bag. And then uh, coming up was Casali and he bunted the ball. It was fielded by Nato. He tried to get the runner at third and the throw got away. And lo and behold, uh, Canaan had to run the board. Runners on the bases and then Willie Berger Knocked in two with a triple out to right for the three-nothing lead. That's where we sit here in the top of the third inning now. 
Go-Go is 0 for 1. Here comes the pitch, and that ball hit high in the air to the center fielder. Giles going back, looking up, covers ground, and makes the catch in right center field, and Go-Go Jones is retired. Kind of a loud out, so the walk does not hurt. No runs, no hit. It was a walk, runner left on base. Up for New Canaan through two and a half. Yours four, New Canaan three, and Fitch nothing. Back with more of the Class L Baseball Championship game right here on the CIAC Network. This may sound like a typical high school basketball game being played on a Friday night in Connecticut. In fact, it's a crash course in cooperation and teamwork. It's a test of dedication, determination, and drive. It's character development in action. If you think high school sports are only about competition, think about this. High school sports can play a critical role in a student's overall education. In fact, studies show that students who participate in school sports are more likely to enjoy greater levels of achievement in their academic lives. At the same time, playing sports helps teach lessons not covered in the classroom. Lessons like tolerance, respect for the rules, and the importance of supporting your community. High school sports, a winning part of a complete education. This message presented by the Connecticut Interscholastic Athletic Conference and the Connecticut Association of Athletic Directors. Right back here at Parmer Field. New Canaan leading pitch by the score of three to nothing. And the folks are probably anxious for some sunshine here on a Saturday in early June. Steve Riley as a, a Dan Rakowski still out there on the mound going through his warm up for New Canaan with pitch coming to plate. And they'll have the top of the order coming up here for the second time. Yeah, it's been a cloudy day here at uh, Bill Crawford Stadium at Palmer Field in Middletown. Chris Quorum Giles to lead it off at a fly ball out to right his first time. Kowski taking his time with his warm up throws out there this half inning of work. And so far, this game has been cloudy for pitch. Yes, indeed. Has not been pretty. Here's your line for you New Canaan 3 2 and 0 for pitch 0 1 and 2. Both errors proved very, very costly. <coughs> so Quorum. Giles will swing from the right side. 0 for 1 on the afternoon. Miskowski into the windup and the pitch, and that's going to be hit up in the air. Foul ball. Is it going to stay fair? Fair. As it went above our roof line here. Coming on in with Gogo -Go Jones, the first baseman to the infield grass to make the catch. So Coram Giles gone on one pitch. I can never understand going after that first pitch unless it's a really good one, Steve. Well, that's what I'm saying, especially down three to nothing. You're the leadoff hitter. They need base runners. You just can't get a three run over with no beyond. John Nato stepping up to the plate. Fly ball to center is first time. Very shallow center field, I might add. First pitch in for the strike. And you've got to put the ball down and hard to test this defense of McCain. Mikowski on the mound. Working with some rhythm. Here comes the pitch. Curveball bends it in for the strike. And quickly it goes 0-2 to NATO. Aaron Hill is on deck, who did cause some havoc on the base pass the first time he was up. Came up with two outs, came up with an infield single, able to win a race of the bag at second. There's a ground ball. It's going to be chopped at third base. Berger will field it. That throw across is low, and it's going to scoot away from Gogo -Go Jones. And heading down to second base goes Nato, and he'll slide in safely before the throw. So that will be E5 on the throw that skipped along, and Nato all the way to the bag at second. Well, there it is, Don. You just have to make Duquesne and make plays in the infield. Before that, they had five popped up balls. And the two hits they, well, the one hit they had before this was actually an infield single. You're always right, Steve. Keep the ball on the ground, make them yeah. play it. And look what happened. So Aaron Hill to the plate had that infield single his first time. Hit it slowly down to the shortstop. Kowski will work with the runner at second. Hill drives this one to the gap in right center field. Should bring home a run and a whole bunch more. It's chased down by Cassione. Heading the second is Hill. He's thinking three. Here comes the cutoff throw. And sliding in safely is Hill with a triple. He went after that first pitch and just drove it to right center field. 
and it is now three to one. Aaron Hill with an RBI triple. Well, they're not 21 and three for nothing, Don, so. Especially the number three hitter in the lineup. He's just a terrific ball player. Here's David Hall. And now with one out, if Hall can put the ball, let's see where New Canaan plays their defense, whether they play up or back. But if he can put it on the ground on the right side, it'll be a 3-2 ball game. David Hall kind of interesting. This team, this Fitch team, got off to a slow start, one and two start. David Hall made a great catch in an 11-inning game victory over North Kingstown, Rhode Island. And from that point on, they went on to win 15 in a row. Kind of ignited things for this team. It's interesting how little things will do that way. A great play here and there, and all of a sudden, you on a win streak. Absolutely. Just like Plainville said that their ignition, ignition this year was a 2-1 to one no hitter uh, that they got off the East Hartford. That pitch in for the strike call to David Hall. Hall playing third base. Reach on the field is Joyce's first time. Aaron Hill down at the bag at third. And McCain and playing their middle infielders back as well as their first baseman. So ground ball here anywhere but third or pitch is going to score a run. That pitch down low. Last time up ball, as you said, Don, uh, just hit that slow roller up the middle. It didn't become a hit. It was just scored as a fielder's choice. Here comes the pitch, and that curl ball hit on a hop. Knocked down by Riley to second baseman. Hurries to throw to first, and he got it there just in the nick of time. That nearly took Gogo Jones's foot off the bag, but he was able to keep it anchored. So Hall will ground down 4-3, but he got the job done. He brought home Aaron Hill, so he'll get an RBI for his trouble. And it's now a 3-2 game with Al Jordan Johnson stepping up to the plate. He hit that on the nose right at Riley. Yeah, and that it actually, the runner on third, Hill, had a hold to see if it wasn't going to be caught in the air before he broke. But he was, you know, uh, Riley was playing so far back that it was easy to score from third. Whole so new now, ball game. Yes, now. indeed. 3 2 score. Here comes the pitch, and that ball's going to be blooped into shallow right field, and that's going to be a base hit. There was no chance for Riley to make a throw because Jones had gone out to try to catch it, too. So would never have an opportunity to get Al Jordan Johnson, so he has a base hit. When Riley turned, he was actually looking to throw the ball to first to somebody, but nobody was there. Rejkowski didn't cover the bag. So two runs for Fitch on an error, a triple, and a ground ball out. Now they have a runner at first with two down, and the entire infield is going to have a quick chat with uh, Mitch Hoffman. I like this coming out and settling things down here for New Canaan because yeah. the wheels could come off pretty quickly. Yeah, and it's his second trip of the, of the day, so he has one more free trip under CIEC rules. You get three free trips per game. And after that, when you do come out, you have to take out the uh, pitcher. If you take a pitcher out, that's not counted as one of the three trips. Contrast that with American Legion done, where you have to get one free an inning, and that's it, just like the major leagues. Now right, back to the plate. He's a designated hitter, popped up in the foul territory his first time. It was a nice play by the catcher, Casey Olette. At the time, Fitch had the bases loaded, and they came up empty back in the first, so they have certainly had chances here today. See if Al Jordan Johnson over there has any speed. He with two outs, you might want to send the run. Here's the pitch, and that ball is going to be chopped down to the shortstop. They go for the out at the back at second. They got it there. Two's got it over to Riley. So Arbuck hits into the fourth out. That ends the third. But for Fitch, they did what they wanted to do. They cut into that New Canaan lead by scoring a pair. They scored two runs. They had two hits. They leave a runner on, sprinkling an error. And all of a sudden, it's 3-2. Three 3-2, two. Three two, New Canaan leading. Fitch back with more right here on the CIAC Network. This may sound like a typical high school basketball game being played on a Friday night in Connecticut. In fact, it's a crash course in cooperation and teamwork. It's a test of dedication, determination, and drive. It's character development in action. If you think high school sports are only about competition, think about this. 
High school sports can play a critical role in a student's overall education. In fact, studies show that students who participate in school sports are more likely to enjoy greater levels of achievement in their academic lives. At the same time, playing sports helps teach lessons not covered in the classroom. Lessons like tolerance, respect for the rules, and the importance of supporting your community. High school sports, a winning part of a complete education. This message presented by the Connecticut Interscholastic Athletic Conference and the Connecticut Association of Athletic Directors. Those are two unearned runs. Really. Right back here at uh, Parma Field in beautiful Middletown, Connecticut. We do our scoring, and uh, Steve Riley has come up with those. both those runs scored by Fitch will be unearned runs. The way you would look at that, now there's, there would have been two outs before the triple ever happened. And then the next four, three ground ball would have been the third out of the inning. So New Canaan coming up to the plate, leading by the score three to two as we start the top of the fourth inning. And uh, Nick Castellon, the right fielder, set to lead it off. Amrine to follow that roulette. So you have eight, nine, and one facing Sean Nato. Nato trying to find his rhythm out there. Is uh, been able to throw up a couple of goose eggs despite having uh, you know some good moments and some bad moments. He's walked three, he struck out a whole slew, he hit a batter, but. He can stay away from those. His free passes always come back to haunt him. Nato into the windup in the 0 1 pitch, swing and a miss by Cassione. The count goes 0 and 2. He had Cassione really fooled on that one as his back right foot came out of the batter's box. The 0 2, and that's down low. New Canaan. Their only appearance in a championship game was 1972 when they lost to Shelton in Class L by the score of 4-2. We'll see Shelton later today, the nightcap game, playing for the Class Double L championship against South Windsor. That pitch is fouled back. Seeing in 1972, Shelton, that would have been the beginning, I believe, of their three, three in a row with Coach Joe Bonanta. That's right. Here comes the one-two pitch. That ball hit. Like a cue ball down in the bag at second and thrown across as a uh, Jonathan Miwa able to throw out the run of Cassio. He didn't charge that. He let that ball come to him. It wasn't hit all that hard, so interesting to see if the, how close that play would be at first base. Grady Amrime stepping up the plate with one down, and the base is empty here in the top of the fourth inning. Casey Ouellette waiting on deck. Nato's pitch to the plate, and that's over for the strike. Now back in the second inning, Nato got that nifty 4-6-3 double play to get out of a bit of a jam. He allowed only one base runner on the walk in the third. That ball popped up and uh, out of play on the third base side. Well, how important, yeah, you're right, Don. That is extremely important, that 4-6-3 double play, because that was the time when Buchanan had the chance to extend that lead and keep that pressure on Fitch. Nato to left-hander. Into the windup. Here comes the 0-2, and that ride high and outside. So it counts those one ball and two strikes. Nato had a complete game victory in the quarterfinals and that win over Jonathan Law pitched the two hitter there's a ball popped up the hill and he'll make the catch. So he certainly has the ability to get the job done. They still trailed that game to Jonathan Law won nothing at one point before scoring on a pass ball and made it two to one they actually scored a run on catches interference I had mentioned uh, steal of home that was actually catches interference the game was run also in that game and then they had the Miwa RBI base hit in the quarterfinal round win. Some light sprinkles coming down here. Bill Pumpkin Stadium as a CFT umbrellas come up here and there. That's always a great indication. You could use them for shade, but yeah. most people. Sun's do not work. out. That's right. John Nado into the windup and the 1 0. That's down low. Count goes 2 0 to Casey Olet. It's always a rainy weekend for state championship weekend. It was remember last year. I remember, yeah. <laughs> remember last year? Yeah. Where she had that classic game between Newington and Southington that lasted 10 innings. Newington with the win. Southington thought they had it won, but. Yeah. With a rain delay. Yeah, yeah that's right. And then rain throughout the game. Yeah. 
two pitchers going at it. Pitching, I think, combining for over 300 pitches between the two. It was wild. We'll talk a little bit about that later. Here comes the 2 1 in for the strike count goes now level 2 and 2 to Casey Olette. Olette has walked twice today. Two balls, two strikes, two out. Bases empty here in the top of the fourth inning. 3 2 score. New Canaan with the lead over Fitch. New Canaan with three in the first. Fitch able to rebound with two in the third. That pitch ground ball hit down the hill. He'll field it and get it across in plenty of time. And a 1 2 3 inning for Sean Nato. That is his first of the ball game. We'll be back for the bottom half of the fourth. Your score, New Canaan 3 and Fitch 2. You are watching it right here on the CIAC Network. Everybody knows that high school sports generate suspense, excitement, and drama. They also generate higher grade point averages, stronger work habits, and greater self-esteem. Everybody knows that high school sports give us more value for our entertainment dollar. They also give us leaders, committed to strengthening communities right here in Connecticut. The true value of playing sports in school can't be measured in wins and losses or dollars and cents. Studies show that participation in sports, along with other extracurricular activities, is one of the best ways to teach leadership, cooperation, accountability, and other invaluable life skills. Don't just stand on the sidelines. Encourage the young people you know to get in the game. When you do, you will be helping them get ahead in life. High school sports, a winning part of a complete education. This message presented by the Connecticut Interscholastic Athletic Conference and the Connecticut Association of Athletic Directors. All right, right back here at Palmer Field as we move on to the bottom of the fourth inning. Momentum swinging maybe a little bit into the favor of Fitch at one point down three nothing. They scored two in the third to make it three to two here Steve and uh, do you feel that momentum swinging a little bit well I think it has I mean the question now is can Fitch hit the ball down and can they get runners on base I mean for Rich Kowski is the thing is you don't want to uh, hit people or walk people or things like that to allow freebies you want to make Fitch earn everything they might get there's a relief pitcher down the right field line now starting to warm up for the king they know that they can't afford any more runs against them. Zach Wolfgang to lead things off here for Fitch in the bottom of the fourth inning. Wolfgang is 0 for 1 with a fly ball out. Kowski's pitch. Snaps into the catcher's mitt, but just wide of the plate. Casey Olette behind the plate. Go-Go Jones at first, Doug Riley at second. Uh, Matt Tooth at the shortstop, and Willie Berger is your third baseman today. Am Ryman left, Casali in center. That pitch fouled off, and Castillon in right field defensively for the New Canaan Rams. Yeah, that rain is definitely coming down. All our cameras have raincoats on today. Camera people didn't bring raincoats, but the uh, the cameras have raincoats. Well, I brought one that I could loan out. You got one? Yeah, yeah, that's right. I have one down by the truck that we could certainly loan out too. I left it down there. Or a producer down the truck if someone does need one. Here comes the 2 1 pitch. That ball is going to be popped up sky high. It's, tell you, out of my view, as it goes way above the rooftop. And coming on in is Matt Tooth, the shortstop. He'll find it. And Wolfgang is retired on a pop up. The short is one down here at the bottom of the fourth. That brings up Miwa, Jonathan Miwa, who is grounded out 6 3. So he's over one of the ball game. The one thing you don't want to do if you're Fitch is pop the ball up a lot. It's the sixth pop up of the game for them. Fitch coach, Coach Peluso, in his fifth year. This is his first championship appearance as a head coach. And there's a bunt right back to the pitcher. Laskowski will field it. And uh, boy, he was coming off the mound with the momentum going towards the first base side. That quick little adjustment with the footwork, and he gets Miwa. Good idea by me, but just not a very good bunt. Just not going anywhere if you're going to bunt it back to the pitcher. Brings up Jonathan Conley, the left fielder, grounded out 6 3 is for his time. What you really got to do is bunt it at that third base. He's already had an error today. Kowski, yeah, you're right. Wyskowski trying to match NATO's 1 2 3 inning in the top of the fourth. That pitch is over for the strike. Call the inside corner.
Gronkowski into the windup, the 0-1, and that pitch down in the dirt. Well, Steve, we've been here plenty of times when it's rained here at Farmer Field, and the, the grounds crew is exceptional. They do a great job in the drainage here, and the outfield is very good, so yeah. shouldn't be too much of a concern unless we get a torrential downboard. Here's the 1-1. A speed pitch, swing and a miss. The skies just don't seem like one of those summer downpours. It just seems like a, a mild set of clouds. Steve Riley, our resident weatherman yeah, today. Right. Here's the 1-2-2 out two, two pitch. That's chopped. That's a Baltimore chopper. This could be trouble. It's going to be charged. Be a handed throw in the first. Got it there in time, or did he not? Nice play by Duke. Save it for his base. Will be Conley. So that goes an infield base hit. It was chopped like a pop-up. Nice work there by Tooth to get the ball and release quickly. and made it a close play at first base. Yeah, that's the Baltimore Choppers, they call it. Chris Gorham dials to the plate. He's 0 for 2. He has popped up, hit a fly ball out. Here in the fourth, McCain continues to lead 3-2. If you're just tuning in, Duquesne in the red jersey tops. Fitch in the all-white uniforms today. Duquesne with three in the first, and Fitch with two in the bottom of the third. There goes a the runner. Pitch low and away. The throw down by Olette and sliding in safely. Tooth made nice play on that, allowing uh, able to get to that ball before it would scoot into the outfield. That's a stolen base for Conley now in the scoring position. Yeah, Coram Giles did do a little fake bunt there to try to distract the catcher a little bit, but he couldn't really distract him. Really. So now the game tying run is in scoring position down at second with two outs here in the bottom of the fourth. I've always been a firm believer, it's not just not me, but uh, come up with a clutch two out, base hit with a runner in scoring position. That just hit, hit the batter as he had squared the bunt. Boy, it looked like he turned and hit him on the hand, and that, that's what they're going to rule. They did not get hit by the pitch. That's a great call by the plate umpire. They're going right to say here. it was an actual offer out of it. Absolutely. I saw it that way. So now they're going to make sure uh, Quorum Giles is okay. That's one of the things they'll do, and they're going to question the call. That, I, I saw it that way too, Steve. Yeah, it looked like he still had the bat out, and he didn't really pull it back. Yeah, he hit it with the, uh, the ball hit the hand that was up on the barrel of the bat. Absolutely. Yeah. If the ball is part of the bat, though, it would just be simply be a foul ball. I mean, if the hand is part of the bat. I think part of the conversation, too, is to allow uh, Chris uh, Quorum Giles to get yeah. the numbness out of the finger, too, obviously. Well, that's a good part also of having four umps because you have an angle now. Of each of the umpires can have that different angle on the ball to see if he, if he, uh, if he didn't pull the bat back. like another you know two out attempt to bunt and pulled it back on the ball a two balls one strike two out Conley with that lead for the bag at second the single Baltimore chopper to get on stole the base here's a bunt it had some backspin picked up by Ouellette made the throw and it's going to get away from the first baseman Joe's here comes a game tying run well you make them field it Good things will happen, and it does for Fitch. They have tied the scores. Conley scores all the way from the bag at second. And Coram Giles will remain at first. There will be no RBI in the play. That will be an error. It's going to be on the catcher, Ouellette. Yeah. Well, in that play, what happened was that time, Ouellette took the chance because that ball had backspin on it. It would have rolled foul. But he decided to pick it up, which is, you know, okay. There was two outs, get the guy out. But he didn't step out before he decided to throw it first. He threw it wide. Just hurried it a little too much. Throw to the bag at first, runner back over there. So Coram Giles down the bag at first, Sean Nato to the plate. So they deliver somehow, some way with two outs and we're tied at three. We have not had a whole slew of pretty runs scored today. No. Look for Coram Giles to run. He's the leadoff runner. I'm sure he has a ton of stolen bases. 
There he goes. Pitch low and inside. The throw by Olette. And running right in to the second baseman is Coram Giles. Good play by Riley to take the collision, make the tag. And I think that Chris Coram Giles is banged up out there. And hopefully he'll be okay. But caught stealing. And that will be recorded as a two to four on the caught stealing to end the inning. But for Fitch, they accomplish the deed. They score a run. They tie it at three through four. We'll be back with the top of the fifth of this Class L Baseball Championship game right after these messages. It may not require a textbook but it's filled with valuable lessons. It may not take place in a classroom, but it's an ideal environment for learning. It may not involve a diploma, but it can help prepare Connecticut's young people for life. It's high school sports. High school sports can play a critical role in a student's overall education. In fact, studies show that students that participate in high school sports are more likely to enjoy greater levels of achievement in their academic lives. If you think high school sports are only about competition, think again. Better yet, think about attending a high school sporting event in your community. You'll be amazed by what you see. High school sports, a winning part of a complete education. This message presented by the Connecticut Interscholastic Athletic Conference and the Connecticut Association of Athletic Directors. Back here at Farmer Field in Middletown, Connecticut. We move on to the top of inning number five. The Fitch Falcons have climbed out of a 3-1 deficit hole to tie up New Canaan at three as they scored two in the third, one in the fourth. New Canaan had a 3-0 lead all the way through the first uh, two and a half innings of work and then Fitch starting to chip away and chip away. Here's your line total, 3-2-2 for New Canaan. Three runs on two hits and two errors. And for Fitch, three runs on five hits and two errors. As Sean Nato starting to feel comfortable out in the mound. Got him one, two, three in the fourth inning. So he's not allowed a base hit a sense the first inning, Steve, if I'm looking at it right. No, no the triple in the, the second to uh, in the second Ham Ryan. So Nato, a left-hander, into the windup and the pitch and swinging at the first pitch, Doug Riley, and he pops it up to the outfield grass and out the second baseman in the right field of Santier and Miwa will put it away. Dangerous that time, as you know, the second baseman wasn't camped under that, so if the right fielder did call him off, it's his ball. But, you know, you really don't want to hear those footsteps all over the place as you're trying to catch a pop up. Andrew Catali stepping up to the plate. Riley now, by the way, is... 0 for 2 and been hit by a pitch. Andrew Casale has reached on there and get into that inning ending. 4-6-3 double play back in the second inning. Boy, what a big opportunity that was for New Canaan. And uh, they came up empty. But have built upon that 3-0 lead at the time. They would love that run right now. The NATO pitch high and outside. Well, when you're playing the heavy favorite, you want to knock them out early. Don't give them a chance to come back. And that 4-6-3 double play was big. And yeah, pitch to Mike Tyson of Class L Baseball as a number three seed. Duquesne in the lonely 24th seed. They weren't supposed to get a title fight here today. But they're in a battle right now, tied at three here in the top of the fifth. Count quickly goes, three balls, no strikes to Casale. No field remains just about straight away for the Fitch Falcons. That pitch is in for the strike letter. High count now, three balls and one strike. They might as well just do away with that pitch in baseball. It's always a called strike. I know. Yeah, unless it's the dirt or just throwing it with backstop. Exactly. <laughs> but if it's any, anywhere near the plate, that's a strike. That's down low for ball four. So Casale draws the walk. He's down to the bag at first. That is the fourth walk issued by Sean Nato today. And that's going to bring up Willie Berger. Berger tripled home a pair of runs back on the first. He is struck out. So the five strikeouts in the game for Nato. The left-handers pitch is rolled foul third base way.
Throw to the bag at first. Runner get back over there. That's Casale. Here comes the 0 1. Late swing by Berger. He was fooled. He was looking for, he was sitting on something yeah. else right there, Steve. Yeah, he think? really thought it was something else. It just waved at that pitch. Willie Berger, a sophomore. Here comes the pitch, and he'll swing at it and foul that off to the first base side by the five guys over there. Might have time to go over there between games. I don't know. Yeah, you see Jordan Johnson over there at first base, popping off really before, you know, Nadu as Nadu kicks, which really limits Nadu's ability to throw over. Another throw to the bag at first. Of course, one of the primary sponsors for the CIEC is Subway, and uh, I noticed there's some Subway stuff down to the uh, <laughs> left. So maybe we don't have to go to. Uh, the burger joint. Throw to the bag at first, run it back over there. You can eat fresh. That's right. Hey, it's afternoon. We have to start thinking of food, right? 117 here on the East Coast for you folks who might be interested in Connecticut baseball. There's a pitch up high, runner goes. That throw a little high and sliding in safely is Andrew Casale. So now he's in the scoring position with one down. Got a nice jump, and Wolfgang throws sailed a little bit. Well, right now, if you're NATO, you have to be a little bit careful with burgers. But Guy behind him has already struck out twice, so Berger is the important at bat. Here. Most important, I think, has been the next few hitters. And McCain hasn't got any hits from the five, six, seven, eight batters. Here's the one, two. Yeah, and that's a strike three call. Delay call by the plate umpire. He rings up Willie Berger. So he's caught looking. That'll be the sixth strikeout of the ball game for NATO. And uh, now you have two outs. That was a key out right there. And it brings up Brian Moran, who was struck out twice. Empire got a chance to use his big strikeout call on that one. A little delayed reaction call. Which I'm not a big fan of. Delayed calls, you want to call it right away. Call it right away. Well, it always makes it seem when you delay, it makes it seem like you weren't sure. I guess. Yeah, yeah. Or you're trying to be very dramatic. And I don't think that's the place of an umpire. Here comes that pitch inside. I'm not saying he's doing a bad job umpiring the game. It's just theatrically. I don't think he did that. <laughs> My man Rudy with phone, the second base umpire. With a fabulous math teacher at Notre Dame West Haven High School. Here comes the 1-1. There's a swing and a miss as he waved at it, did Moran. Not a very good swing at all. You can tell that weight shift is way off when that right foot comes out of the batter's box. Outfield, left fielder shifted a bit. That's Conley off the line. Swing and a miss and a strikeout. He overmatches Moran. He's done that all day. Nato with his seven strikeouts. So the walk stolen base is not hurt. In the top of the fifth of New Canaan. No runs, no hits with a walk. Runner stranded in scoring position at second base. They've done that a couple of times today. We're back with the bottom of five. Your score, it is New Canaan and Fitch tied at three. This is the Class L Championship on the CIAC Network. These days, the concept of value matters more than ever. And you'd be hard pressed to find a better value than high school sports. Extracurricular activities, including sports, make up about 2% of the budget for a typical Connecticut high school. In return, participation in sports promotes citizenship and sportsmanship. Sports also instill a sense of community pride and teach lifelong lessons about cooperation and self discipline. They encourage physical fitness, they produce community leaders. By offering so many benefits to the community for such a small percentage of a school's overall budget, it's easy to see why high school sports are one of the best bargains around. The real cost would come from not having them at all. High school sports, a winning part of a complete education. This message presented by the Connecticut Interscholastic Athletic Conference and the Connecticut Association of Athletic Directors. Back here at Palmer Field, as you can see, three runs on two hits and two errors by New Canaan. And then for Fitch, three runs on five hits and two errors. Errors have been very important parts of this ball game here today. If really uh, help both teams produce some of their runs as we move on to the 
bottom of the fifth inning and Fitch stepping up to the plate here. And it's Nato to lead it off. And that pitch is uh, down low for ball number one. Sean in the ball game has hit a fly ball out, reached on an error and scored. Did that back in the third. And the Canaan has Mike Keshin down the right field line warming up. That pitch is popped up, fouled off. First base way and out of play. Folks still have the umbrellas out, although uh, not spying uh, any sprinkles as I look out the door behind us. Some might be doing it uh, for safety sake. Here comes the 1-1 one -one ground ball. I mean, it is Saturday night. They might be going out. Ground ball, the two, the shortstop. Got it across to the bag at first. And the call is made and go go Jones with a nice stretch. He's done that a couple of times here today. And Nato, who was hustling down the line, is retired. Two, Aaron Hill. Brings up Aaron Hill. So nice play by the shortstop, Matt Two. Two has been uh, pretty effect effective down there at shortstop today. I mean, he has, and you know, that was uh, another ground ball, which is what Fitch has to do, is keep trying to put that ball in play. Here's Aaron Hill. Aaron Hill in the ball game is two for two with a base hit. Infield single, RBI triple when he found the gap in right center, scamping all the way to third, and that brought home the first run for Fitch. That was all back in the third. Now he swings and hits it very high, straight away center field, Casale going back, going back, and makes the catch. That ball hung up there a little bit. And I'll tell you what, Andrew Casale got a great jump, and what a route he took to that baseball. That's a that's a fine catch in center field. Well, now you know why he's a two-time All-League player in the FCAC, and what a great play as he turned. That time, he turned turned his shoulder, ran, ran, and ran, and he ran a long way as the center field here at Palmer Field is 400 feet deep. So David Hall to the plate. Hall collected an RBI and a ground ball out back in the third when Fitch scored a pair. He's also reached on the field his choice, so he is 0 for 2 with the RBI is David Hall. We're in the bottom of the fifth with two down, base is empty. Nice play, moment ago by Andrew Casale. Muskowski's pitch down low. Count one ball and one strike, two out. Here in the fifth inning. As we said in the pregame, Don, uh, Casale has it in his blood. Yeah, he does, that's right. Got a brother playing in the Detroit organization. Brother played four years at Vanderbilt. There's a drive down the right field line. That's going to be a fair ball. A little hesitation as Hall took the swing. He wanted to read the play effectively, not get thrown out as the Cassione able to retrieve it. And Hall, who was thinking too, will end up with a base hit, a two out base hit. And it brings up Al Jordan Johnson. Yeah, if his, um, if his older brother played at uh, Vanderbilt. He may have played with Jason Esposito, the former yeah. Amity High School. Amity High School third baseman. Third baseman. So Al Jordan Johnson to the plate. He's the first baseman. He's been hit by a pitch and singled as Fitch trying to get the lead for the first time. They send the runner, the throw, the tag, and out! Rudy McFoley with the out call. Nice tag by Riley, the second baseman, fielding the throw from Casey Olet, who's now thrown out a couple of runners. I'll tell you what, that was close at the bag down there. It was, but Willette, you know, it was a high fastball, so Willette had a good position to get rid of it. So with the caught stealing, the inning will come to a close, and for Fitch, no runs. They had a base hit. They don't leave anybody on the base pass. We're back with the top of six. New Canaan and Fitch. They're tied at three. It's a good one. The Class L Championship game right here on the CIAC Network. This may sound like a typical high school basketball game being played on a Friday night in Connecticut. In fact, it's a crash course in cooperation and teamwork. It's a test of dedication, determination, and drive. It's character development in action. If you think high school sports are only about competition, think about this. High school sports can play a critical role in a student's overall education. In fact, studies show that students who participate in school sports are more likely to enjoy greater levels of achievement in their academic lives. At the same time, 
Playing sports helps teach lessons not covered in the classroom. Lessons like tolerance, respect for the rules, and the importance of supporting your community. High school sports, a winning part of a complete education. This message presented by the Connecticut Interscholastic Athletic Conference and the Connecticut Association of Athletic Directors. We move on to the top of inning number six. New Canaan coming back to the plate. They had a 3-0 lead in this game after one inning. Fitch scored two in the third and one in the fourth to tie it. 3-2-2, two, two, the numbers for New Canaan. For Fitch, 3-6-2, and two, so they're out hitting the New Canaan Rams. Rams coming in as the 24th seed in this tournament, and Fitch coming in seeded third. Nato has certainly settled down. He's uh, certainly been stingy, allowing just two hits. And his strikeout totals are very good, too, as I believe that is up to seven. seven. Yeah. Seven strikeouts, four walks, one hit batter. Nato into the windup and the pitch. That ball hit high the air towards the gap, right center field. And coming out, the second base for Miwa can't make the catch. It's off his glove. He had Santer coming in, the right fielder. Giles was in the vicinity, too. Miwa just couldn't make the catch and save at the bag at first is uh, Rakowski leading things off here for New Canaan in the top of the sixth. They will rule that a base hit. That was uh, an exceptional effort by Miwa, but perhaps he should have given way to his right yeah, fielder. Yeah, you might remember, Don, that last inning when there was that pop-up down there that he almost had the collision between the right fielder and the second baseman, and then he had to give away. The right fielder didn't, you know, take the ball from the second baseman. That time he allowed the second baseman to take it, and it really is a right fielder's ball. So Rakowski, who's the pitcher today for New Canaan, an all-league player in the FC Act, down the bag at first, and Gogo -Go Jones trying to bunt one, and that ball's going to scoot to the backstop, and uh, they're going to call out a strike. Uh, they're going to say Jones went after that pitch down at the feet, yeah. and uh, down the second base will go uh, Rakowski in the scoring position, and Jones now up with an entirely different mindset, perhaps. He scored out a pass ball. I, I believe so. Yeah. Creeping in from first is Johnson expecting bunt, and so backing out is Go Go Jones from that left handed batter's box. Big point of the game here on the yeah. same side at three. Jones likely, he has to try to bunt that ball to third base side. He will bunt it third base side, fielded by the first baseman Johnson. He'll look and throw to the bag at first, and they got it there in time to Miwa covering the bag. So well done by Al Jordan Johnson. I mean, that takes a lot to be able to charge like that. What if this yep. guy turns the swing? Well, he not only charged, but he picked the ball up on the left side of the diamond. And he held the runner at yeah. the bag at second. Yeah. The great work all the way around. So Gogo Jones cannot get the sacrifice to go. He's thrown out 3-4. Cassione to the plate. He has popped up in the foul territory and grounded out to the second baseman. Kowski down the bag at second. Represents a go-ahead run for New Canaan here on the top of the six of a 3-3. Class L championship game. The pitch, and that is going to be fouled off. That was up by the shoulders. That's the only one after that one. Not much wind at all right now here at Farmer Field in Middletown, Connecticut. Those flags are as still as can be out there in left center field. Here comes the 1-1. One -one. That ball popped up and over the hot tin roof to the parking lot behind us right near Steve Riley's automobile. <laughs> I parked a little bit further away this year. Yes, smart. We have seen a couple of broken windshields. Remember a couple years yeah. ago uh, by the five guys to our right? Somebody came out to a broken windshield. Here comes a 1-2. And that's going to be popped up and out of play again. You mean the restaurant floor, right? Huh? The restaurant floor, right? The what? Restaurant. The restaurant? You said the five guys to our right. Oh, right. Five <laughs> guys, yeah. Well, people know five guys, yeah. yeah. Free plug. <laughs> right. You gave him the free yeah, play. Yeah. I didn't identify him as the wrestler. You'd have to know that. Here comes the pitch, and that's outside. Two balls, two strikes. We got one out, running down at second base. 400 feet to straightaway center field. The fans certainly enjoying the action here today. They might be on the edge of their seats right now in this 3-3 game. Here comes the pitch. Ball hit out the right field for a base hit by Cassio. They're going to send the runner around. Herskowski's going to come home. Here comes the relay throw. And safe at home. It was delayed. It looked like for a second 
that uh, Rakowski was going to slide by home plate, Steve. <laughs> yeah. He's in safely. RBI hit for Cassio and a 4 to 3 lead for New Canaan. Yeah, head first slide that time by Rakowski. That brings up Grady Amrine. Amrine with a triple back on the second, and he popped up as a shortstop, so he's one for two. Here on the top of the six. Rakowski with a leadoff single. Pass ball put him in scoring position. So important to execute. Once again, just a little bit of a mistake defensively has cost the team a run here today. Absolutely. Nato sort of the bag at first, and the runner is back over there. Cassione, right now the hitting star of the game. Coming up with that big RBI base hit here with the top of the six. They give New Canaan the 4-3 lead. Man, that pass ball looms big now. It allowed the Rajkowski to get to, and they're, I guess they're going to appeal to third base. Say that the runner went, but they already threw it over to first, so I think that that ends it, doesn't it? Well, the umpires will talk about it momentarily. Yeah. In other words, they already threw over to first, and the question is, does that end the appeal? They're calling that a balk. Wow. Because he didn't step off. He's claiming he didn't step off the rubber. So Cassion down the baggage second on the balk. He's in the scoring position. Well, he was trying to appeal to third base, but he had already thrown a pickoff. Yeah, right? so he did. I don't think that would have been the end of it. Well, with that controversial ending last year between Southington and Newington, Rudy Phone was not a part of the umpiring team. And remember, everybody's confused. And then he had Romano coming off the bag at second after yeah. his teammate had missed home uh, with a potential game-winning run. It would have been the game-winning run. And he was allowed to go back to the bag at second. I had a long conversation yeah. with Rudy about that. <laughs> well, then there actually was uh, some rumors afterwards that the ball that was used to tag out That's home right. plate was not the actual game. Ball. That's right. It was uh, thrown into the stands, that actual game ball, by the shortstop. Apparently, there's no video of right. that or anything <laughs> else. Uh, you know, John Hole of Channel 3 did a terrific, terrific speech. It was on last night on the local news and uh, about that game. Matter of fact, he wanted to get some of my comments about it, but we just couldn't lock up Horn to, uh, to, to talk about a little bit because that game was so mysterious. The whole yeah, night was. was just eerie, you know, with the rain and the way things went. It was a fabulous, a classic between Newington and Southington. This one a classic right now, 4-3 New Canaan leading here in the top of the six. Well, even if Nadu wanted to uh, appeal that, he would have just stepped back off the rubber and just thrown it over third. I don't know why he would throw it on the rubber. He was claiming he wasn't. But. Nadu checks the runner at second, the 1-0 pitch, and that's a strike call over the outside corner to Amra. Top of the order in case he will let on deck uh, for New Canaan here in the top of the six, hitting 4-3 New Canaan with the lead, the Class L championship game. Pitch out hitting New Canaan, 6-4. Here comes the pitch to the plate, ground ball. Hit down to the first baseman, playing wide of the bag there, and he's going to win the race. Sliding head first was Amrine, but uh, he was kind of getting near three unassisted. I've been impressed with the play of Al Jordan Johnson all over the field, his hustling ability here for the pitch Falcons. Brings up the top of the order now with a Casey Olette as the third base goes Cassione, and that roller to the right. Let today has walked twice and grounded out. Lead off hitter scored a run. He walked to start the ball game. First three batters back in the first when Ducanen all scored. They reach on an error, uh, two errors and a walk to be precise about it all. It was not a pretty beginning to fit. Well, give Ducanen a lot of credit, Don. They haven't really allowed the momentum to shift that much. Words, the momentum did shift the pitch, but they didn't allow it to get away from them as if they weren't really, you know, they're the big underdog and maybe that's the, you know, now they're going to lose. They haven't done that. They just kept battling away. You know, Mitch Hoffman, real likable guy, their head coach, really uh, conducts himself with some confidence and class, and I think that uh, certainly trickles down to his young team, a very young team. Yeah. Really starts with the top, especially with high school kids. <laughs> you know, you have yeah. your leaders, but you really need that coach to be the positive factor. You're right. Very cooperative also, which is a key. McCain is very cooperative uh, throughout this entire process, making their way to the championship game. I pick a little high. Count goes to two balls and two strikes to Casey Olek. 
Casey was selected to play in the junior all-star game. The game usually played in Plainville, isn't it? Uh, yeah. Over the last couple yep. of years. Here comes the 2-1. That ball is fouled off for the first base side. You know, baseball getting stronger out of the FCAC or the deep south part of the state of Connecticut here. Recent years it's really been dominated by teams from the SCC, some of the northern teams, but you're starting to see uh, FCAC teams start to make some noise. We've seen some also some great teams come out of the ECC. Waterford and Fitch and that ball filed off. And uh, Montville. Yeah, Montville, absolutely. See, from where I'm from, I, I can't look at Montville being a team from the east. I look at yeah. them as just being north in the state of Connecticut. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, now being Massachusetts guy. I live right on the coastline out there, you know. Not on Cape Cod, but projects out a little further than Connecticut does. Here comes a 2-2 pitch, and that's fouled back. Cassiel sitting at the bag at third. He's the insurance run here for the New Canaan Rams. They lead it 4-3 in the top of the sixth. He's really getting into the chess match part yeah. of the game right now. He's starting to feel that? Yeah, absolutely. Because now the pressure starts to turn on to Fitch. 2-2 two -two pitch is fouled back. Fitch has come all the way back from a 3-0 deficit. They tied it in the fourth with a run. And now here in the sixth, New Canaan has regained the lead. The big hit by Nick Cassione, an RBI base hit to right field. Scoring Wachowski, who had singled the lead off the sixth. The pass ball allowed him to go to second base in the scoring position. Here comes the 2-2 pitch. Ground ball hit the third. It's fielded by Hall and across the diamond. And plenty of time to get Olette, and that will end it. But for New Canaan, they score the go-ahead run on two hits. They leave a runner stranded at the bag at third. Boy, they have stranded a few today in scoring position, but they lead 4-3. We're back with the bottom of the six right here on the CIAC Network. Everybody knows that high school sports generate suspense, excitement, and drama. They also generate higher grade point averages, stronger work habits, and greater self-esteem. Everybody knows that high school sports give us more value for our entertainment dollar. They also give us leaders committed to strengthening communities right here in Connecticut. The true value of playing sports in school can't be measured in wins and losses or dollars and cents. Studies show that participation in sports, along with other extracurricular activities, is one of the best ways to teach leadership, cooperation, accountability, and other invaluable life skills. Don't just stand on the sidelines. Encourage the young people you know to get in the game. When you do, you will be helping them get ahead in life. High school sports, a winning part of a complete education. This message presented by the Connecticut Interscholastic Athletic Conference and the Connecticut Association of Athletic Directors. Talking to Jim Bransfield, the resident historian here in Middletown, Connecticut, also does some terrific uh, newspaper writing for the Middletown Press and as our public address announcer today. Don Boyle, Steve Riley alongside as we move on to the bottom of inning number six. Uh, yeah, the, this uh, facility, Palmer Field, deeded to Middletown uh, back in the 1940s. So they started playing some baseball way back then. And uh, well, in 1966, they hosted the first American Legion state championship here. 1988, the American Legion World Series. And between all that, we've had plenty of state tournament stuff on the CIAC level competed here, including the year of 1970, uh, 1992, I believe, yes, right? Yes, yes, yes. Yes. You know, I actually remember the 1988 American Legion World Series here because I remember Pete Rose Jr. was playing at this tournament. So Fitch coming into play here in the bottom of the six. They trailed by one. They have shown the ability to come on back. They trailed three nothing at one point. Al Jordan Johnson will lead it off. Have been impressed with his hustle here today. He's been hit by a pitch and is singled. So he's up for the third time, one for one against Dan Wyskowski, who remains on the hill. Here comes the pitch, and there's a ground ball hit sharply, knocked down by Berger, picks it up, and the throw across the diamond. He nearly ate that one, did Mr. Berger, but he recovered, and uh, Al Jordan Johnson is thrown out, 5-3 to start the bottom of the sixth. That was well hit. Yeah, well hit. Took it right off the chest, Number 14. did Mr. Berger, and he flipped that one over to first. Ali Arabach 
I got it. Flipped it over to first. That was a plain burger right there. That was nearly a sandwich for Mr. Willie Burger. Here's the pitch on our back at slow curve. We'll miss inside plate. Umpire took a long look at that one. Our back today has uh, popped up in the foul territory. It's a nice catch by the catcher, Casey Olet. And he has uh, popped up to shortstop. So he's 0 for 2 as a designated hitter. Here comes the 1 0. And that's a ball that's chopped down the shortstop. Fielded by Tooth. A long throw across. A stretch by Gogo Jones. And they got him. Nice play by Gogo again. He is long and limber, isn't he? He is. And, you know, this is the thing. Once they took that lead, now the defense gets a little more confident. They know that they can afford to make an error, so to speak. And so now they start playing a little more confidence out there. And there's two fielded ground balls in a row by New Canaan. You know, Zach Wolfgang is the number seven here in the lineup. And uh, not discrediting guys hitting the bottom part of batting orders because they can certainly get a lot done. And matter of fact, Fitch has got some contributions. But you would think the top of yours are guys we are, uh, you know, you, you get the most bang for your buck, so to speak. So if Zach Wolfgang can get on, this can really set things up to try to get guys like Nato and Hill to the plate in the bottom of the seventh where they might need him here trailing by a run. So here comes the pitch, and that is over for the strike call to Zach Wolfgang. Well, that's why it's so important for the bottom of the order to just get men on base in any way you can. And for a pitcher, you just want to try to throw a lot of strikes. Kowski's pitch, ground ball, hit down the third. Berger knocks it down. He'll chase it and save at the bag at first. Will be Wolfgang. That took a bad hop on him right there. It'll be interesting to see how they rule that one. I, I, I would imagine, well, they're going to rule it a base hit. Okay. I probably would have gone the other way because I'm just a mean guy there. Steve <laughs> Ryan. <laughs> well, the ball, as you said, took a bad hop right yeah. off his chest. And, you know, the question now is do you send Wolfgang? So Jonathan B one of the plate, so Wolfgang does his job. That ball is fouled off. You got Wolfgang at first, covering the base over there is Go Go Jones. <laughs> there you go. Well, here's the thing: you already have a catcher throwing two runners out at second base, and do you really want to start the seventh inning eight nine one? Still activity down there in the right field line for uh, New Canaan. Activity in the left field line. For Fitch. Throw over to the bag at first. Miwa is 0 for 2, by the way. He's grounded out twice. <laughs> he is the number 8 hitter in this lineup for the Fitch Falcons. Kane and Rams leading 4 to 3. Trying to win the school's first ever state championship. By the way, for our folks who are watching on the internet, we'll be here for all the post game celebration. So we'll look forward to that. Jonathan Miwa. Digging back into that right-handed batter's bar. Here comes the 0-2 ground ball. That's hit to the shortstop. It's fielded by Tooth. He'll go across the diamond. They say safe over there is Miwa, who is very fast, and he's down the line quick enough for the infield base hit. That was chopped a bit, and Tooth, he fielded it cleanly but didn't have a chance. At either base, brings up Jonathan Conley, the left fielder, who is one for two with a run scored and a stolen base. Well, it still sets up the top of the order no matter what. I mean, obviously, you want Conley to get a hit here if you're a Fitch fan, but sets up the top of the order in the bottom of the seven. You know, they're playing that left fielder rather shallow, aren't they? they really are. Am right. Real shallow for the number nine hitter, Jonathan Conley. Here comes the pitch to Conley. Did he check the swing or did it go around? They will appeal. They say he went around. First base umpire makes the strike call. So the count is 0-1 with two out and two on here for Fitch. Cannon leading 3-2. We're in the bottom of the sixth inning. Runners lead from the bags at first and second. That pitch is hit up the middle. Great bit of hitting. It's going to be charged by Casale, and they will stop. They're on third. And the ball went through Casale, and a run will score. They're going to send another. No, they'll hold the runner at third base. So Miwa held it third. Wolfgang scores the tie it at four. Conley will be given a base hit, but probably no RBI. That will be E8 allowing a run to score. Boy. Well, I don't know if it's E8 to allow a run to score, but it's E8 to allow the back two runners yeah to yeah you're right anyway. because he had to uh, he would have had to make the throw home right well, be although were they going to send him i don't know if they were going to send oh, him. i think they were you think they were yeah with two outs i think he was rounding that base 
So we'll give him the RBI then, right? Probably the RBI until we hear otherwise. No RBI. The score says no RBI, Steve. Yeah, I, I, yep. I thought I saw that way. Okay. Yep. Yep. Okay. Probably because the outfielders are playing shallow. And he had a no great RBI. chance. I mean, I don't think he was going on that. Uh, whatever. So they're officially scoring that. A base hit. An Since error allowing to run the score. Right. So the error allows to run the score. Third base coach was holding him up. So it brings up the top of the order, Chris Quorum Giles. Tough to hold him with two outs, though, you know? But I guess they figured Caselli was shallow, and he has a good arm. He just took his eye off the ball. Yeah. He wanted to see if the runner was going or not. So just the notion that he might be going disrupted his concentration. There's a ball hit to the gap and right center field by Coram Giles. That's way over the head of Castellon. And that is going to bring home a couple. Castellon turning the back in second. He's digging for three. Here comes the throw. It's offline. And that is a 2-1 double in the bottom of the sixth inning by Chris Coram Giles. And lo and behold, Fitch has jumped out to a 6-4 lead. Just How many triples like that, have we seen yeah. today? All started with two outs down and a couple of infield singles. Wow. That's a crooked number three up on the board for Fitch. And look at the fans. They're loving it now as Fitch leads 6-4 here in the bottom of the six. And I believe all those runs are earned. Yeah, the, the error really had nothing to do with the... Uh, yeah, on a triple would have right. scored them all. Looking ahead now to the seventh inning, top of the seventh inning, it's Riley, Casali, and Berger, the scheduled hitters for New Kane. And so now we got to think about what their batting order is going to do in the top of the yep. seventh. What a change here. For the first time in the ball game, Fitch with a lead. They trailed 3-0. They have trailed 4-3. They respond with three in the sixth inning to take the six for lead. Six runs on ten hits and two errors for New Canaan. Four runs on four hits, and they've committed three errors. This is Nato. And that pitch down low breaks away from the catcher, Ouellette, and no advance by the runner. Quorum Giles down at first. Uh, third base, scored. excuse me. Wise decision, though. Aaron Hill awaiting on deck. How about the performance of Sean Nato today? Faced early adversity from his defense, including his own. Had some control problems early, has settled down, and uh, done a pretty nice job today for Fitch, and he could be on his way to a win. Murkowski's pitch, and it hit him between the shoulder blades, and he's down to the bag at first, so the hit batter. Put runners on the corners for Aaron Hill. Hill is two for three with a base hit, RBI triple and a fly ball out. Well, you know, that's just a lack of concentration after giving up that big triple. You know, Dan Rajowski just, you know, didn't concentrate enough on that last pitch. He tried to throw more than one baseball. Well, Hill has had a terrific day at the plate. When he hit that fly ball to center, you might remember, Andrew Casali made a terrific running catch with his back to home plate. Right. Absolutely terrific catch. Hill with a hit here could put this game way out of reach. Fitch leading 6-4 over New Canaan here in the bottom of the sixth inning. Good look at the runner at first. I've seen a couple of box calls. I think uh, umpires seem to be watching that more closely than they have in the past. Yeah, I've seen in the tournament, they, in, even in the semifinal game, I saw one where they just said the pitcher did not come to a complete stop. That's one they've really been looking at this year. Here's a curveball. It hangs high. Rakowski might... Retiring just a little bit out there in the mound. He is a sophomore. He's been terrific pitching throughout this tournament to, for this New Canaan team. Here comes a 1 0. That pitch is in for the strike. Pitch last one at baseball championship when they beat Amity 10 0 in 2005. This is their fifth time trying to win one. Here comes a pitch to the plate. And that's down low. New Canaan has never won a baseball championship. Their last visit some time ago, back in 1972. Aaron Hill at the plate. Count goes two and one. Runners on the corners for the Fitch Falcons. Here comes a pitch, and that missed inside. 
Count goes at three and one. We do have some activity down in that uh, New Canaan bullpen, Steve. It looked like they're ready down there. Yeah, I think it was Mike Cashin that was warming up down there, the senior. I'll feel just about straight away. Here comes a 3-1 ground ball. Knocked down by Berger. Gets up to throw to the bag at second. That's a great play by the third baseman. They get the final out of the inning and a big out it is. But for Fitch, the crooked number is up there in plain view. It's three on the board. They take a 6-4 lead. They do leave a couple on. We're back with the top of the seventh. Fitch leading by the score of 6-4. Scheduled to hit Riley, Casali, and Berger for New Canaan. Back with that after this. It may not require a textbook, but it's filled with valuable lessons. It may not take place in a classroom, but it's an ideal environment for learning. It may not involve a diploma, but it can help prepare Connecticut's young people for life. It's high school sports. High school sports can play a critical role in a student's overall education. In fact, studies show that students that participate in high school sports are more likely to enjoy greater levels of achievement in their academic lives. If you think high school sports are only about competition, think again. Better yet, think about attending a high school sporting event in your community. You'll be amazed by what you see. High school sports, a winning part of a complete education. This message presented by the Connecticut Interscholastic Athletic Conference and the Connecticut Association of Athletic Directors. Back here at Parliament Field, we move on to the top of inning number seven. And Sean Nato trying to complete the deal he began today. Looking for the win here and bringing Fitch the 2012 CIC Class L Championship. They have a 6-4 lead over New Canaan moving into the final inning, perhaps. Top of the seventh there, Steve. Well, if you look back at that second inning down in that 4-6-3 double play, I look at that as a pivotal point in the game because New Canaan had a three-run lead. And if that doesn't happen, then the lead would have been even greater and maybe Fitch would have had an insurmountable deficit to come back from. And, you know, here at the bottom of the order for Fitch comes through with, what, four runs? And a couple of infield singles all started at last inning with two outs. So coming to the plate is Doug Riley, the second baseman. He's reaching in there. He's been hit by a pitch. He's popped up for the second baseman. So Riley stepping in. First pitch is ball one. Casali on deck for New Canaan. Down by a pair of runs, being out hit 10 4 here today. Here comes the pitch, and that is over for the strike. They had a, a base hit in the first, a base hit in the second inning, and two in the sixth. They have stranded runners in scoring position on a couple of occasions. Even that inning when you're talking about the big double play, the 4 6 3 double play back in the second, Steve. Yep. Surrounded around a triple and a walk and hit batter, which and that's, you know, it looked like Fitch was really going to fall apart. Ground ball hit down to the first baseman. It's fielded cleanly by Al Jordan Johnson. He wins the race for the bag, and Riley retired. There's one down on the top of the seventh, three unassisted. And now Fitch two outs away from the Class L State third, Championship. So many little things taking place here in this baseball game today. Casali has reached in there, hit in that 4-6-3 double play and has walked. Had that miscue in center field when he overran the base hit to center. Go ahead, run at the time with score for Fitch. Here comes the 1-0, so he'd love to get on base, try to set up his teammates. Berger is on deck, count goes 1-1 one one with a strike call right there to Casali. We'll uh, remain here for the post-game ceremonies. That pitch, uh, a speed pitch, swing and a miss. I haven't seen much of that from Nato. <laughs> no, you haven't. And that time a pretty pitch that time. Nato building confidence as he goes along here in this seventh inning. Here comes the one, two, and that ball splash foul towards Route 66. Yeah. 
6-4, pitch leading here in the top of the seventh inning. Nato into the windup on the 1-2. Ground ball hit off the end of the bat down the hall. Charges the infield grass, bobbled it, and still got it across in time for the out. Good play by David Hall. He never rushed things, Steve. He made sure he had the ball in his grass. No, he kept his concentration there and fired it over to first. Lily Berger to the plate. Tripled home a pair of runs back in the first. Has struck out a pair of times. So he's one for three with two RBIs. You got Moran on deck, who's been overmatched all game long by Sean Nado. So not looking good for the Rams here with two outs in the top of the seventh. But you never know. Pitch put together a two run rally. What a three run rally in the sixth inning. There's a swing and a miss to take the lead. Here comes the 0-1, up a tad high, and the count goes one ball, one strike to Willie Berger. Willie's going to have a couple of welts today. He took a couple yeah, of balls off the shots chest down there at third, yeah. 1-1 one, one down low. In that first inning, he actually showed he could bump. That's right. right. Yeah. Two balls. One strike, two outs, the pitch to the plate. In for the strike, count goes level at two and two. So now New Canaan down to the final swing. And on the flip side for Fitch, down perhaps to the final pitch. They need one out to become the 2012 Class L champion. The pitch is popped up. It's in the foul territory. Al Jordan Johnson over. Does he have room? And he makes a terrific catch for the innings. Final out. The game's final out. And Fitch is your 2012 Class L champions. A 6-4 win over New Canaan. And I'll tell you what, that was fitting by Al Jordan Johnson. Pandemonium. Fitch wins the state championship, the first since 2005. Just a great play that time by Al Jordan Johnson as he just took off down that right field line like he wanted that title he wanted that ball and he wasn't going to let himself be denied that was absolutely spectacular congratulations to Fitch and head coach Mark Peluso as they come up with the victory here today 6-4 we'll take one commercial break we'll be back with the post game festivities from down below right after all this These days, the concept of value matters more than ever. And you'd be hard-pressed to find a better value than high school sports. Extracurricular activities, including sports, make up about 2% of the budget for a typical Connecticut high school. In return, participation in sports promotes citizenship and sportsmanship. Sports also instill a sense of community pride and teach lifelong lessons about cooperation and self-discipline. They encourage physical fitness. They produce community leaders. By offering so many benefits to the community for such a small percentage of a school's overall budget, it's easy to see why high school sports are one of the best bargains around. The real cost would come from not having them at all. High school sports, a winning part of a complete education. This message presented by the Connecticut Interscholastic Athletic Conference and the Connecticut Association of Athletic Directors.
and coach from both teams will receive medals and the coaches will receive appropriate trophies. First, for runner-up, New Canaan. Number 22, James Duke. Number 16, Eric Yeager. Number 22, Ned Galuzzo. Number 15, Henry Lavieri. Number 22, J.R. Anderson. Number 7, C.J. Altman. Number 24, Alex LaPolice. Number 18, Max Wilson. Number 19, Alex Curto. Number 17, Shane Ritchie. Number 12, Brandon Avake. Number 20, Mike Fashion. Number 21, Brady Emron. Number 9, Nick Passio. Number 14, Gogo Jones. Number 10, Dan Rapowski. Number 2, Max Coe. Number 13, Brian Moran. Number 5, Willie Berger. Number 3, Andrew Casale. Number 11, Doug Riley. And number 1, Casey Olet. Assistant coach, Ron Bentley. Assistant coach, Jeff Lambert. And assistant coach, Mike Patron. And to receive his medal and the runner-up black, the head coach from New Canaan High School, Mitch Hoffman. So there's Mitch Hoffman of the New Canaan Rams receiving the runner-up trophy from the CIAC. That's a terrific run here by New Canaan coming in at the 24th seed. They'll finish second best in Class L as they drop this one to Fitch by the score of 6-4. For Class New Canaan, L four runs two. on four hits and three errors. Now Fitch will receive their championship medallions and, of course, that terrific plaque. That's what they played for all season long. And Fitch will be awarded the CIC Class L championship plaque. They will display that proudly within their school walls, I am sure. And for Fitch Falcon coach Mark Peluso, he's been the head coach for five seasons. This is his first state championship along with his uh, senior team. He's got so many seniors on this team. Uh, Cooper Robinson, Aaron Hill, Sean Nato, uh, Zachary Wolfgang, uh, David Hall, uh, Jeremy Santier, uh, all seniors. Uh, Aaron Hill's actually a junior, so. But uh, he was terrific today, was uh, Aaron Hill. Jonathan uh, Miwa is a senior. Jonathan uh, Conley, a senior. Chris Coram Giles, a senior. Oliver Auerbach, a senior. Al Jordan Johnson, a senior. All doing great things. And uh, as we went up and down the list, Aaron Hill, I believe, the only uh, underclassman who got a start here today. And uh, boy, was he terrific, too. As uh, Here's Aaron Hill. Receiving his medallion down below. As Fitch scored six runs on ten hits, they committed two errors, but they are your champions here. 
They had a big second inning in which they climbed back into this game. They scored two runs, a couple of key hits. Aaron Hill with an RBI triple. David Hall with a ground ball out that scored Hill, and they made the score three to two at the time. After uh, New Canaan had up their lead, after, well, back in the fourth inning, let's go back a step. In the fourth inning, it was Conley reaching on a base hit when he stole a base. It put him in a scoring position, and he would eventually score on an error. And it tied it at three. And then in the sixth inning, trailing four to three, they would score three times. It was Zach Wolfgang with a leadoff single. Jonathan Miwa with a base hit. Uh, Jonathan Conley with a base hit. Uh, the ball was overrun when it was hit the center field by Casali, the center fielder. It allowed the run to score that tied the game. And then Chris Coram Giles with a triple scoring two for your final margin at 6-4. And there it is down below. Fitch with the black in hand. Your 2012 CIAC Class L State Champion for Fitch Falcons. What a finish. And you watched it right here on the CIAC Network. Special thanks to the entire production crew. Great job down below. Great job.